Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to dive into a few common asked probability questions in data science interviews. I call those type of questions coin problem because they involve with a fair coin and a bias coin and use one of them to simulate the other. If you're interested in learning what those problems are and how to solve them, then keep watching. A typical version of the problem is you are giving a bias coin that the probability of getting a hat is p. p is unknown, but we know that it's larger than 0 and less than 1. Sometimes the question made it clear that it's not 0.5. How do you design a strategy to simulate a fair coin using that bias coin? A fair coin means the probability of getting a hat is the same as that of getting a tail, and both of them are 50%. It's pretty clear that we could not use one toss to simulate a fair coin given that p is unknown. So we want to try multiple tosses and find the combination of outcomes that have equal probability. We can start with two tosses and see what we can get. Here we use edge stand for head and t stand for tail. So for two tosses, we can get four different outcomes, edge edge, edge t, t edge, and TT. Then we can get the probability of those combinations. It's obvious that HT and TH have the same probability, which is P multiplied by 1 minus P. And that is what we want to leverage to simulate a fair coin. Specifically, we toss a bias coin twice in a row. If it's HH or TT, we discard the result and toss twice again. When we see HT, we could use it to represent a head of a fair coin. And when we see TH, we use it to represent a tail of that fair coin. In this way, we can guarantee the probability of getting a head is the same as the probability of getting a tail. Now we have the simplest and the most straightforward solution to the problem. Let's take a few seconds to think about if there's any potential issues with this approach. What happens if p is an extreme value, say 0.9? We can get the probabilities of the four combinations. Because we discard HH and TT, we only keep HT and TH, it means that we will be throwing away the results more than 80% of the time. And it may take many tosses for us to get a desired outcome. In other words, the efficiency of this approach is low. So how could we improve the efficiency of it? Can we find a way to use the results of two heads or two tails? In fact, we can. We could keep flipping the bias coin and combine the outcome together to simulate the head or tail of a fair coin. Let me elaborate this. When we get two consecutive heads or two consecutive tails, we can toss two more times and here are all the eight possible outcomes. Let's try to organize them into pairs, and the elements of each pair have the same probability. And here are three pairs. With this finding, we can sum the probabilities of the first element of all pairs, and that would be the same as the sum of the second element of all pairs. What does this tell us? Well, it means that we can assign the first group as head of a fair coin and the second group as the tail of that fair coin because they have the same chance of occurrence. That's how we can leverage two consecutive heads and two consecutive tails rather than throwing them away. Using this method, we end up only throwing away four consecutive heads and four consecutive tails. All the other outcomes can be utilized. Intuitively, the overall sampling efficiency increases. A more scientific way to get the sampling efficiency is to compute the expected number of tosses to get a head or a tail. Essentially, on average, how many tosses do we need in order to simulate a head or a tail of a fair coin? The less number of tosses, the higher the efficiency. I will leave this part to you to figure out the exact sampling efficiency and how much we have improved the efficiency by keeping two consecutive heads and tails. Let's now summarize this strategy. When simulating a fair coin with a bias coin, we can start with two tosses. If the outcome is HT or TH, we can simply return the result of a head or a tail. If the outcome is HH or TT, 
we need to flip another two times and return head or tail if the outcome is one of these combinations. We only discard the outcome if it's four consecutive heads or four consecutive tails. Moving on, we have a more advanced version of the problem. Instead of asking you to generate a fear coin from a bias coin, the question asks you to generate a range of n numbers with equal probability 1 over n from a biased coin. For example, generating numbers 0, 1 to 3 each has a 25% probability. As you may have noticed, if we use head and tail to represent 0 and 1 respectively, we are able to simulate two numbers with equal probability. But how do we go beyond two numbers? Feel free to pause the video and think for a second. If you don't have any ideas, think about if you can simplify this problem a little bit. During interviews, when you are asked a hard question, especially a technical question, you could always try to solve a simpler version first or make some assumptions. This can be helpful to break down a seemingly difficult problem into simpler pieces. Ok, so back to the question. What if the coin is fair rather than biased? Could you use it to simulate four numbers? For sure you can. If it's a fair coin, you could get four distinct outcomes from two tosses, HHTT, HT, and TH, and each outcome has exactly the same probability, i.e. 25%. Now, we can break this problem into two smaller problems. One is to get a fair coin from a bias coin, and the other one is to figure out how many tosses do we need in order to get n different numbers. Well, the good thing is that we've already solved the first problem just two minutes before. Another interview tip I have for you is try to leverage any problem that you have solved earlier in order to solve the current problem. Now, we only need to know how many tosses are needed to get n different numbers. Again, let's start with a simple example. If we toss a fair coin twice, we have four outcomes, each occurs 25% of the time. If we toss a fair coin three times, we have 8 outcomes, which is exactly 2 to the power of 3. If we toss a fair coin m times, we have 2 to the power of m results. What we want is to simulate n different numbers. How many tosses do we need? Well, I guess the answer is clear. It should be log base 2 of n. Now you have the answer to the problem. It's not as difficult as it appears, right? One caveat is that the log base 2 of n may not be a whole number, so we need to round it up in cases like this. For example, if n is 5, we need 3 tosses in a row to get 8 distinct outcomes, and we have to discard 3 outcomes. Now, let's put the solution together. First of all, we need to use the bias coin to simulate a fair coin. We toss 2 times in a row, and we can get HHHT, TT, and TH. Let's say we choose HT to be the head of the fair coin, and TH to be the tail of that fair coin. And both cases have the same probability, P multiplied by 1 minus P. Then we want to simulate a range of n different numbers with this fair coin. If n is 3, we want to toss 2 times because rounding log base 2 of 3 to an integer is 2. For a fair coin, we can get 4 outcomes and we only need 3 of them. We can use HH to represent 0, HT to represent 1, and TT to represent 2. We discard the outcome TH. We can translate it back to the unfair coin. And HH would be HTHT of that biased coin. The last problem we'll go through today is to submit a biased coin using a fair coin. Specifically, you are given a fair coin and you are asked to submit a biased coin with the probability of getting a head 1 over n. Does it sound like a different problem? It's actually very similar to part of the previous problem we just solved, namely how to use a fair coin to generate n different numbers and each has probability 1 over n. A simple example is when n is 4, meaning the bias coin has a 25% chance of getting a head. We need to toss a fair coin twice and we have four outcomes, and each has 25% probability. We can then choose any one of them to represent the head of the bias coin, and use the other ones to represent the tail. This will give us a bias coin with a 25% probability of getting a head. 
So how many tosses do we need in general? Actually, we have covered this in the previous question as well. We will need log base 2 of n number of tosses, and if the number is not an integer, we'll have to round it up. So if n is 5, we need to toss 3 times, and we'll have to discard 3 among the 8 outcomes to get the desired probability. You may wonder, would abandoning the result impact the probability? It will not, because we just simply consider it not happening by ignoring the result. It's a typical technique used in computational statistics, and it's called rejection sampling. I hope those questions and answers are helpful. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I make at least one video per week to help you with your interview preparation to land your dream job. As always guys, I appreciate you for taking the time to watch this video. Let me know if you have any questions or feedback. I will see you soon.